Hi everyone, great to see you again and thanks for watching. In tonight's video I explore a local scene, uh, somewhere that's really quite close to me. I can be there very quickly if the conditions are looking good and, and, and the light's promising. Um, it's great to have a place like this on our doorstep where we can really just um, get there very quickly uh, when the mood takes us. So in this film we're going to explore some of the difficulties involved in shooting straight into the sun. This is a, a, a technique that um, is fraught with some difficulties. Um, it's very contrasty to shoot straight into the sun and it exposes anything on the lens elements. So if you've got dust spots on your sensor or you've got little flecks of dust on your, on your um, lens elements, they'll show up um, in, in the images and it's almost unavoidable. But before we get into the processing of the image, um, cue the film. Okay, so that was a great shoot, absolutely fantastic light, but very contrasty. So let's take that image into Lightroom, we'll make some adjustments in Lightroom and we'll finish the processing in Photoshop. You can see the challenges in shooting an image like this, um, shooting straight into the sun, um, very, very contrasty and as a consequence I've uh, had to underexpose this image in camera by two stops, um, exposing for the highlights. Um, but I'm not concerned about that because the, the dynamic range of the sensor of uh, many cameras nowadays is so good to cope with this without introducing significant noise. So, um, and, and using a grad um, in this really wouldn't help because you'd be grading out all of the areas and reducing the exposure to all of the areas that, that, that you're interested in, the trees and the monument. So really the options here are either to, to shoot a, a number of uh, images and blend them or as I'm doing here I'm just shooting a single image and bringing back the detail and I'm quite happy with the quality of that I've got, I've got no problem with that at all. Um, other uh, issues and, and challenges with shooting images like this are well flare obviously uh, and indeed also exposing any dust spots uh, either on your sensor or on the lens elements. So how are we going to process this? Um, well, we're going to try and bring back some detail, obviously, into the shadow areas whilst retaining and without blowing the highlights um, significantly. Um, and we're also going to need to do some corrections. This is shot, as you can see, if we look at the original photo, it's shot at 16 millimeters. So because of that, we've got some distortion and you can see that the monument is leaning significantly when it doesn't normally. Um, and we've got some leaning of the trees. The leaning of the trees doesn't bother me at all, really. Um, but clearly this will need to be corrected and I'll correct that in Photoshop um, later. So I'm going to do some basic Lightroom adjustments to try and bring back some of the detail in this image. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the lens profile. Um, I'm going to tell the uh, program that it's a Canon lens and immediately it recognises that it's an f2.8 f2 Mark III lens. So that's uh, added the profile. I'm going to push the exposure a bit. Let's just bring back some of that detail. Okay, take it to about there, that looks fine. Obviously in pushing up the exposure, we've increased the highlights a bit, so we're gonna bring those back. Okay, so we'll take them to just before the clip, that looks fine. We're gonna push the shadows a bit. Uh, we'll take those up to about there. I don't want to push the shadows too much because I do want to retain significant amounts of contrast in this image. Um, but I still want to have some detail. So if we push the shadows to there and we have a look, we can see that we've got we've got detail. Maybe just push a little bit more to about 15. That should be fine. That looks good. Um, add a little bit of clarity to the image.
Okay, so um, that's the majority of our Lightroom adjustments made. Final things that I'd like to do here are maybe just push a little bit of color into the sky, a little bit of a bit more saturation, push the warmth in the, the lower half of the sky and the, the coldness in the upper part of the sky. Um, so that looks good. And if we have a look at this image where we started and where we are now, massive improvements. If we have a look in some detail, you can see that despite having initially underexposed this image, we really have not introduced any noise at all. Uh, it was underexposed by a couple of stops to start, but really no significant um, issues at all. So that looks, looks great. Happy with that. So we'll take the image into Photoshop and we'll correct some of the final issues. So we'll straighten this up, probably clone out some of these um, um, uh, flare spots and some of the dust spots up here and we'll fine tune it um, in uh, using luminosity masks. Okay, so this is our image imported from Lightroom as a TIFF file into Photoshop. Uh, first thing I want to do with this image is to correct the, um, the leaning of the tower off to the right hand side. So uh, to do that, we're going to duplicate the background layer. Um, if we open up our layers, and we're going to uh, use the transform tool. So we're, we're going to use the perspective correction tool. I'm going to grab this top area here, and we're just going to drag it to the left. And you'll see that that straightens up the tower. That looks about right. So the effect that that's had is to straighten the tower, but we've lost it. But we've now got some leaning of these trees. So I'm going to just drag, drag the image and pull it back along because I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose the edge of the of these trees too much. So I'm happy enough with that. Hit return. You've obviously got this bit here, we're going to have to crop that out. So I'm going to hit the crop tool and I'm just going to crop down to that. Okay, so we have largely corrected that now. And if we look at where we started, or where we are now, that looks much more natural. So happy with that aspect of the correction. Okay, the next um, thing I like to do in Photoshop is just to get rid of some of the um, dust spots um, that we that we know are in this image. So if we enlarge the image to around about 100%, we can just start to take these out. So I'm using the um, spot healing tool in Photoshop, which just clones across from a, an adjacent area. I find it quite good for removing dust spots. Okay, so just getting rid of most of these. There aren't as many as I, as I thought, actually. I thought there were more than that. Um, another one over there. Okay, so that's got rid of looks like most of those you tend to see them in the sky obviously the lighter bits of the image and one down here okay so that's got rid of most of those okay so having having got rid of our dust spots next thing i want to do is to just remove a little bit of the flare that we're seeing just down here and over here, maybe just drawing the eye a little bit. I'm going to leave a little bit of it in because it is it is something that we see in, and I quite like the effect in this particular image, but I'm finding this and this maybe just a wee bit distracting. So I think the best way to remove that might be just to use the lasso tool and use the edit fill function in Photoshop. So we'll, we will draw, a, we'll just take a lasso around this. We'll use this and it just clones across it. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. It's not quite got rid of it, but it looks it still looks fairly natural. So the next 
Next one I want to try and have a have a go at removing is, is this one just draws the eye just a little bit for me and just want to either get rid of it or really dampen it down. I'm just going to take a lasso around that. And we'll see how that looks. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And if we just draw back, we can see what we've done in terms of our perspective corrections and getting rid of dust spots and flare. Might just get rid of this as well, actually. Um, just a little bit distracting. Use a lasso tool again just to try and get rid of that. Okay. Okay, so happy with that. That looks pretty natural. So really the final thing to do here, I think, is just a, a little bit more toning. I want to just inject a little bit more contrast and saturation into this image, but it's looking great. I like the composition. I like the lead in from the right hand side with the, the daffodils just catching the light along to the tower. Um, and I like the, 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 the contrast in it at the moment, but I just want to emphasize that a little bit more just by probably just burning in the, the top half of the, of the picture a little bit and just injecting a little bit more saturation, but that looks good at the moment. Okay, in terms of uh, toning our image, um, a little bit I want to do here. Um, one thing that immediately I'm looking at is this area here, which maybe just looks a little bit on the dark side. So I want to just lift that a little bit. You can do that in a number of ways. You can just, you could just um, lift it using curves and erasing with a mask, uh, the areas that you don't want to lift. Um, I'm actually using luminosity masks here, so effectively what I can do is I can just click on an area that will highlight these white areas, which are the, 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 the dark areas. Um, so effectively this is just creating a mask for me, and I can create a layer of that, and I can, I can lift the curves in that area, and you'll see the, the very dark area starting to lighten a little bit. So if we turn that off, you can see the effect. It's just affecting the dark areas, the very darkest areas in the image. I don't want it to affect everywhere though. Um, so if I work in the mask on this and I switch to a brush, just a, this is a large, very soft brush. I don't want necessarily to make the tower itself too light. I want to have contrast in that. And I also want to have sufficient contrast in the foreground because I think it's probably lightened the foreground a little bit too much for my liking. So I think again, we'll just, what I'm really trying to do is really just to have that effect um, predominantly in that area of trees. So if we switch that layer off, you can see it's predominantly affecting, predominantly affecting the trees. So off, there's our effect. And if we ha have a look at this in some detail, you can see that there is detail in here, although it looks a little dark. Um, there is definitely detail in that area, so I'm, I'm happy with happy with that. So the other thing I want to do is to um, lighten again some of the, the highlight areas, particularly around here. Um, so I'm going to hit, I'll hit lights. And so again, we'll bring up a curves box. We'll just pull that up a little bit. So it's just bringing up the, the lights a little bit. It's obviously affecting some areas too much. So if we turn that off, turn it back on again. I really like the effects having in the trees up here. That looks great. So in this area, I think that looks really good. It's good in the foreground too, but it's too bright here now. And it's maybe lightened this area up a little bit. So again, if we work on a brush, just a large, large brush. We'll just bring that down a bit. And we'll just darken the edges down a little bit too. And again, just a large brush, soft edge just across the top because I want to leave the edges in the top burnt in just a little bit. So again, if we 
Shrink our image down a little bit, turn off the effect of that, turn it back on. Quite like the effect that that's had. I think that looks better. And if we have a look at the effect of our toning that we've had so far, I think that's strengthened the image quite a bit. Okay, so the image is, um, is, is looking good now. Um, just one or two final bits of toning that I'd like to, to do on the image. Um, and then perhaps increasing a wee bit of saturation. Just that I still think that this lower area here, the foreground, probably could be lightened a little bit. A number of ways you can do that. I'm just going to use a, a, a standard curves um, dialog box to, to do this. So we'll just bring up curves, raise it a little bit. Yeah, to about there, that's fine. We'll have a look at the mask, or we'll, or we'll work in the mask, and we'll use a, a soft edge brush again, because we don't want this, we don't want this curves effect to apply everywhere, so we're working in, in the mask. So we'll just brush across that. The, ma the mask, sorry, the brush is set at 100%. It's very soft edge brush, as you can see. And we're just going to bring back some of the, some of the darkness to that to that area because we it's important we retain significant amounts of contrast in this image it's important to retain some of the contrast so if we turn it off turn it back on it's predominantly affecting this area which i'm, I'm happy with it's useful just to sort of go back and draw back your image and have a look at it a little bit um, in a, a smaller format just to check on what it looks like. So I'm happy happy enough with that. I think that looks pretty good. Just a little bit more lightening of that of that foreground has helped that area a little bit. Okay. And next thing I want to do is to just inject a little bit of saturation into the image. Not too much. Don't want to go over, over overboard too much here. Maybe to about maybe sort of about nine, ten percent, something like that. So again, off on. Let's just scroll back and see how see what that looks like. Subtle effect, but I think that's helped the image again. So that that's looking looking good now. Quite happy with that. Okay, so we are almost finished our adjustments to this image. Um, last thing I want to do really is to um, apply some final. Um, toning to it and this is something that I do a lot just to burn in the edges a little bit more and increase contrast in some areas a little bit, bit more. So I'm just going to going to bring up a curves dialog box. Really just the intention is just to burn the edges in a little bit more. Um, and But I don't want this effect to apply everywhere because it's darkening every, everything just a little bit too much. So this is going to be an, a selective effect. So what I want, what I'm using is a, a relatively large soft edge brush at 100% opacity and we're just going to brush the effect of that away because it's it's dark in some areas just a bit too much and I don't want that effect so we'll just brush some of this away really just applying it predominantly to the top half of the of the image and to the um, to the edges and if we make the image a little bit smaller, you'll probably appreciate the effect a little bit more. Um, that area maybe is just a little bit too dark. There we are, that looks fine. Okay, so let's see what effect that's had. Let's, so that's before, that's after, before, after. Just increase contrast a little, that little bit more which I think is quite effective. I quite often do that. You can do this, do a similar kind of thing just by applying a vignette, but actually I find it much easier just to uh, apply, a, uh, just to pull the curves down a little bit and then brush away the effects that I don't want. And I think that's, that's quite effective. Um, if we look at that in the sort of size that you might look at it, for example, on Instagram or Facebook, I think that looks probably even stronger than it did beforehand because we're really just increasing um, contrast uh, in some areas and we're just focusing our attention on this particular area which is which is quite effective. Um, I will um, uh, post a separate video on how I select and size and prepare images for social media um, but that's all I'm going to say about this particular image for today. 
I really hope you've enjoyed the video and until next time, bye bye.